People, we need ideas. For our next show, anyone have any? Ideas? Anyone? Ashton, ideas. Guys, we need ideas for the May 4th show. Not terrible ones. I got a really good idea. Maybe we could do like a sports themed show. I don't know, Meredith. Just get something with more jokes. You know, that's actually not half bad. What about top 10? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. Welcome back to the afternoon show. My name is Meredith. I'm Haley. Disclaimer, in that new opening, I'm not actually that mean in class, I promise. So today is May 4th. Do you know what day it is? I don't know. National Orange Juice Day? <laughs> no, it's actually National Star Wars Day, if you didn't get it from our oh. intro. Today, to start off our show, we have some Star Wars fun facts for you. George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, was originally uh, originally planned for Yoda to be played by a monkey with a mask and a cane. The line, I have a bad feeling about this, which Jace says in our opening, is said in every single Star Wars movie. David Prowse, the guy who plays Darth Vader in form, not voice, is banned from attending official Star Wars events because George Lucas finds him annoying. Now for a quick announcement about our FHS blood drive. Yes, NHS is holding a blood drive May 12th. And we have a QR code here scan, for you guys I'm to being scan. Cut off, but scan so, the QR code really yeah. quick. You a few seconds, get it done, and donate blood or sign up for the blood drive if you're an NHS. Yep. All right. I'll take it away now. <laughs> <laughs> now for some announcements. Juniors and seniors, prom is this weekend on Saturday from 8 to 12. Make sure to bring your student ID and arrive before 9, as 9 is the final required entry time. Also, for those of you choosing to wear heels, feel free to bring a pair of more comfortable shoes because going without shoes is not allowed in the U.S. Bank Stadium. AP exams are this week and the next, so remember to keep up to date with your My AP account and check Schoology so you don't miss your testing day. This Monday, May 2nd, was College Decision Day, and one of our team members, Leo, went around and filmed some clips for Monday. Let's check it out. Decision Day, some seniors are wearing college gear. Um, to see where they've committed to go to college. So could you explain what we're celebrating today? I would be happy to, yes. I'm Ms. Walker from the counseling department and we're down here today celebrating our seniors who are making their post-secondary plans. And today is the big day where, where students, uh, we're asking that they make their decision on what they wanna do next year. And for if they're going on to a four-year college or a technical community college, or if they're going to be going into the workforce, entering the military. We're celebrating all our seniors today. We're so excited for them. And seniors, if you aren't sure and you still would like some help kind of figuring out your next plans, if you want to take a gap year, whatever you're thinking, come to the counseling office and we will be more than happy to help you. Yay, seniors. So that sounds like a fun day for seniors. They're wearing all their college gear. They get cupcakes and stuff. And I'm going to send it back to the desk. Thanks, guys. Yeah, congrats on all your post-secondary plans. Yeah, that's great for everyone. Now we're going to throw it over to Will for a special top ten. Oh. oh. Well... Uh, hey, guys. Um... So this is really last minute, but uh, we we have the blood drive mascot. If we could get get to the two shot of this, um, hi. Hey. How we doing? I'm doing great. Saving lives. 
All right. Is there anything you want to say about the blood drive? I mean, you get to save lives, you get to miss class, and you get to hang out with me, buddy, the blood drop. Okay. Uh, yay. Thank you so much for coming down into the studio. Thanks for letting me interrupt. Oh, when is the blood drive, by the way? Oh, it is May 12th from 8.30 to 1.15. There are QR codes all over the school building on posters, and you can sign up on there. Any questions, you can see Beckman in room 3312 or Johnson in 3305. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So that happened. Um, <laughs> I guess we're going to get into the top 10. Uh, thank you so much for all the feedback last week, guys. Uh, this week's top 10, since it's May the 4th, I figured we'd do a Star Wars themed top 10. So this week we're looking at the top 10 Jedi. Uh, we have a few Jedi, pretty diverse cast, I'd say. And without further ado, we're just going to start it off with number 10, uh, Jedi Master Kit Fisto. Jedi Master Kit Fisto was on the Jedi Council through um, Episode 1 through Episode 3. He fought in the Clone Wars. Obviously, he was taken out during Order 66. Um, I don't know. He's very unique in the Jedi Order. He always has an upbeat attitude. He's always portrayed with that smile on his face. He usually took on the aquatic missions for the Jedi, especially in like the 2003 Clone Wars animated series where we got to see him fight that giant underwater Separatist uh, cannon. Very cool Jedi, very unique powers, uh, overall cool skill set. At number nine, we have the Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn. He trained Obi-Wan, and he was going to be the Master of Anakin, but Darth Maul cut him down. Um, very cool, very sage, very wise in his ways. He, I kind of admire him in the way that he didn't do things by the book. He was sort of like a nomad within the Jedi Order. You know, the Jedi Council wasn't his biggest supporter, or they, they just didn't, I don't know, they didn't agree with how he did things. Um, at number eight, this is one of my favorite Jedi, it's Ahsoka Tano. We get to see her throughout the Clone Wars, that's when she was introduced. We saw her in Rebels, we saw her in The Mandalorian. Um, very unique Jedi, obviously those white, lights, white lightsabers are pretty cool. Um, I'm very excited to see what the Ahsoka series does with her character. At number seven, we have the Jedi Master Plo Koon. Uh, he was very prevalent throughout the Clone Wars, especially amongst his troops. He's very unique in that sense that he had a deep admiration for them all. Uh, he respected and valued each member of the Wolf Pack, and he was just very cool design. At number six, he's no longer canon. Well, he is, but we don't know how much of his story is canon. We have the Jedi Master and turned Sith Lord Darth Revan. Um, started off as a Jedi, got turned to the dark side. A lot of complicated stuff happened. Ended up coming back to the Jedi. Then some more complicated stuff happened, but the reason he's on this list is because he's cool, he's super powerful, and uh, that design is pretty awesome. At number five, we have Mace Windu. Uh, Mace Windu is pretty cool in the sense that he has a purple lightsaber and he's played by Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, he's able to channel the dark side without succumbing to it. He's a very powerful Jedi, as we saw demonstrated in episode three, where he, he was able to successfully combat and defeat Emperor Palpatine in a one-on-one -on -one duel. And obviously, you know, he didn't live, but he was just a very cool Jedi. At number four, this is probably where the controversy starts to set in. I have Luke Skywalker. I don't know what it is. I know Mr. Hall's in the studio right now. He has his hands up in the air. He can't believe this blasphemy. But I just think he doesn't compare to the other three Jedi that, ha that I have up on this list. Um, he was very powerful in Legends. He was, you know, he was able to reestablish the Jedi Order. But I feel like in the sequel trilogy, they kind of washed him up. Like He just wasn't... He was really hyped up, and then he didn't meet up to that hype. Um, he was still pretty powerful. You know, that one-on-one -on -one scene with uh, ben, or, uh, Kylo Ren on Crate was pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. Kind of let me down. At number three, we have the Jedi Grandmaster Yoda. Uh, he's small, he's green, and he's very wise in his ways. Do or do not, there is no try. Um, yeah, I really like Yoda. He talks funny. He's little, he's green. His laugh's pretty funny. And uh, cool Jedi. At number two, we have the Chosen One. It's Anakin Skywalker. Uh, he's kind of the hero of the saga. We see him develop throughout the... <laughs> Mr. Hall's in the studio right now, guys, and he's just so disappointed in me. He can't believe it. He believes Luke Skywalker should have been one, but I think Anakin deserves the number two spot on this list because he's the Chosen One. Um, he eventually did bring balance to the Force, and he was just really cool. Uh, he's the Jedi Master to Ahsoka, but was never granted the rank of Master, obviously, as seen in Episode 3. Um, he executed Order 66, he burnt up on Mustafar, and then he became the Dark Sith Lord, Darth Vader. And then at number one, there's no debate, he has a series coming up, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi. I feel like when I ask most people who their favorite Jedi is, this is usually their top pick. Um, obviously, as I said, he has a series coming up, very excited for that. Uh, he trained Luke Skywalker for a little bit and then sacrificed himself so the crew of the Millennium Falcon could escape from the Death Star. And... He's just a very cool Jedi, in my opinion. And with that said, guys, that's going to be our top 10 for this week. I'm going to send it back to Haley and Meredith. 
Thanks, Will. That was a great top ten. That was a really good one. Very fitting with the theme. Mm -hmm. So now we have another edition of Who's in the Elevator this week. Let's take a look at the clues. Who's in the, the elevator? elevator. Yeah. yeah. All right. This teacher has four guitars and seven harmonicas, which is not enough. They once saved three kids at once while lifeguarding in three feet of water. They were a former football and wrestling coach. Secretly wants to own a ranch outside of Livingston, Montana. And has three other family members here at FHS. Who do you think it is? I don't know, but look at this cool guitar. Speaking of having many guitars, this is Mr. Tauchi's. And he doesn't even know how to play it. No, so I don't either, but learn. it's cool. Maybe I should learn. All right, well, think on that one. We'll come back to it towards the end of the show. Now we're going to take a look at the fun Star Wars themed Spitfire with Miss Langdon and Miss Brayland. Hey guys, and welcome back to Spitfire. Today we have Miss Langdon and Mrs. Brayland. Are you guys ready? Yes, All right. Too. What is your favorite favorite color? Green. Purple. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? The first one? <laughs> the last one, the Son of uh, Skywalker one. Sorry. Favorite Jedi? Darth Vader. Rey. Favorite Sith Lord? Not gonna happen, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of one either. Is Jabba? Is Jabba a Sith Lord? I don't know. He's gross. Luke or Anakin? Uh, Anakin. Luke. Worst Star Wars movie? The last one. Return of the Jedi. Is it better before Disney or after Disney? After. Before. Padme or Leia? Padme. Leia. Darth Vader or Kylo Ren? Darth Vader. Oh, Kylo Ren. R2-D2 or C-3PO? Oh, those are R2-D2. R2-D2. BB-8 or Chewbacca? Chewbacca. <laughs> BB-8. <laughs> yes or no to Ray? No. Yes. Do you like Boba Fett? Yes. No. <laughs> Best trilogy? The original? Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. Favorite Skywalker? Anakin. Ray. Jedi or Sith? Jedi. Jedi. Boba or Jango Fett? Boba. Jango. Rebels or clones? Rebels. Rebels. Ewoks or Wookiees? Ewoks. Ewoks! They're my favorite. <laughs> that is all we have for today. Thank you guys for watching and back to the hosts. Thank you guys so much for participating in that. Those are some really good Star Wars. Yeah, th that was a fun segment. Mm -hmm. Now, if you and your friends are looking for something fun to do this Friday, you can head to the Farmington Lanes, where, shout out to Devin, our audio guy, he works there, um, for bowling for only $15. From 5.30 to 7.30, 50% of all bowling proceeds and 10% of food proceeds will go straight to the class of 2022 senior party. Yeah, now we are going to throw it back to the desk to hear about Star Wars. I'm back at the desk. Uh, quick side note: I thought my picks were controversial, but after that Spitfire, I don't know. They seem, they seem a little more justified. In my opinion, I don't think Rey's a Skywalker. I think Luke was a little low on your list, Will. I think the whole original trilogy was based around Luke, and you put him at number four. Come on, Mr. Hall agrees with me. Darth Vader was cooler. I mean, he's cooler, but like he's colder too. I guess so. I, I can, I can seen. agree with that. So instead of doing um, sports this week, we decided to switch it up and talk Star Wars for our Star Wars themed episode, May the 4th. Meredith doesn't like the sports, but don't worry, Stephis and I will be back next week for sports. So let's talk Star Wars, the elephant in the room, the big thing coming up in the Star Wars world is the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, it is. starring Ewan McGregor coming back as Obi-Wan Kenobi. What do you think about this, Will? I'm very excited about it. As I said in my top ten, and uh, you know, most people who know me, Obi Wan Kenobi is my favorite Star Wars character. Um, I'm really looking forward to them addressing this time period within the Republic and its transition into the Empire. Obviously, we got to see a little bit of that in the Bad Batch with them slowly starting to phase out the clones. Yeah. At this point, the clones are all but phased out. We have the Empire; it's in full force. The Inquisitors are looking after the Jedi, and obviously, Obi Wan's going to be a pretty high target for them. 
Yeah, the only other thing, the only complaint that I have about the trailer so far, other than the Grand Inquisitor thing, is that they didn't age Obi-Wan enough, but I do think he does look a lot like Ewan McGregor in the thing, because I sent a, I sent a picture of it, of Ewan McGregor in the trailer next to Alec Guinness as mm -hmm. Obi-Wan. My friend who doesn't watch Star Wars, my friend Jalen, he lives in Arizona now, and I asked him, do these guys look like they're the same person? And he said, yes, I think they are the same person. So I think they did like some makeup and stuff to make Ewan McGregor look a little more like Alec Guinness. I just don't think he looks old enough, but those last 10 years on Tatooine obviously weren't the best to him. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was addressed in the Kenobi novel, too, that he carried a great sense of grief and sadness for what had happened to the Jedi Order because he felt very responsible for the failure with Anakin yeah. and, you know, the misdoings of the Jedi Council, and I think that that grief and that sadness will definitely help lend to the aging. Yeah. Um, and, and on another note, we're looking up and moving forward into the future projects of Disney, and season three of The Mandalorian has started filming. Uh, obviously, you guys know where Mando and Grogu are at this point in the Star Wars universe, if you saw the Book of Boba Fett. If not, there's some minor spoilers, I guess. I won't go any farther than that. But I'm really looking forward to it. What about you, Leo? Yeah, I'm disappointed that they fired Gina Carano as Cara Dune, but I am excited to see the next season of The Mandalorian after The Book of Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett was a little bit disappointing. I was hoping for Boba Fett to be a little bit cooler, a little bit tougher of a character. But um, it is what it is. I still enjoyed it. It was still fun to watch. And Cad Bane came back, and Cad that was, was really cool, cool, too. Yeah, I was disappointed to not see that in the final series of The Clone Wars, but I'm glad we got to see it in The Book of Boba Fett. And obviously, you know, Din Djarin is now yeah. wielding the dark saber like I did in our intro. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's really interesting to see what will happen with the legacy of the dark saber. If you guys don't know, the dark saber is, uh, you know, whoever wields the dark saber has the right to rule over all of Mandalore. Yeah, they control Mandalore. And basically, yeah. control Mandalore. Mandalore is the home world of the warriors in the Star Wars universe, the Mandalorians. They have the suit and the armor. It's what the Mandalorian wears Boba Fett, Jango Fett. That's, they all kind of, Mandalorians look like them. And I think it's just going to be really cool to see what they do with Season 3 and what aspects they handle. Yeah, it is going to be really cool to see Season 3 of The Mandalorian. I am very excited for it. And all the other Star Wars content coming up, the Ahsoka show, the Obi-Wan show, all of that's really exciting. I'm a big Star Wars fan, as you can tell. And also, who do you think the most powerful Jedi is in the series, Will? I feel like probably the most powerful Jedi to have ever existed uh, would have to go to Yoda, and the only like contender yeah. that I'd put next to him would be Anakin. But Anakin had the most potential. He had, he had the, the highest potential. He had the highest count. Count, yeah. but he never really got yeah, to Yeah, Yoda reach. had the power, though. I'd like to see some Star Wars content, maybe, of Yoda when he was younger. Hopefully we can get some of that on we're Disney+. Getting that, Plus. We're getting that with the uh, Star Wars Eclipse game, so that'll be coming Oh, yeah, up. that'll be really cool, because I'd like to see Yoda when he was younger, when he was in his prime, what he could do then, because he was really old when it came to... Um, the all the movies we saw him in and his yeah. powers were severely weakened from his prime but what i would say for the most powerful one is luke i think he got the well yoda too but luke as well i think he got all the training he's a great jedi and yeah i think um darth vader the reason that he could defeat him though is because of what happened on mustafar and how much his powers were weakened by when obi-wan defeated him and i think obi-wan truly defeated him with the experience kind of like, this kind of is, like, the same thing related to sports, how sometimes yeah. the most experienced guy will win over the more powerful one, the more athletic one. Yeah. Kind of like Tom Brady, yeah. how in the Super Bowls he keeps winning. It's kind of the same thing. We'll talk about this next week with Ryan. But, yeah. Yep. And then before we send it back to Haley and Meredith, to my fellow Star Wars fans, it's been a whole two years since the final season of The Clone Wars came out. We cap ended with, uh, you know, that final shot of Darth Vader. It was my movie, life so. during quarantine, The Clone Wars uh, oh, show. Oh, <laughs> believe me, it was too. You know, every week I looked forward to it. And I'm still kind of just in awe with that final uh, ending with... Yeah, you know, the Darth, Darth Maul holding. versus Ahsoka. That was really cool. The mm -hmm. only thing I didn't like about it was the arc with the um, Martina sisters, I mm -hmm. believe it yep. was. Yeah, that was... I wish we would have seen more Boba Fett and Cad Bane. The other thing I do want to see is how if Cad Bane in canon did give Boba Fett his dent, because his dent was obviously already there I believe in the so. Book of they Boba kept Fett. That canon. Yeah, I, I really, I really want to see that sometime in the future. That would be a really cool thing that yep. I would like to see. I'm getting repetitive about it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. So now we're going to send it back to Haley and Meredith. Thanks, guys. All right, well, another thing about Will, recently he went around and asked you guys about Star Wars. So let's hear what you said. Hey, FHS, it's Will Hornblad, and since today is May the 4th, I thought I'd go around the high school asking people who their favorite Star Wars character is. Hi there, guys. I'm joined here by the ceramics teacher and my own TC teacher, Mr. Hall. And Mr. Hall, who is your favorite Star Wars character? It's easy. Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. Thank you very much. 
All right, FHS, I'm here with my friend Ethan. And Ethan, who is your favorite Star Wars character? I'd say Obi-Wan Kenobi. And what do you like about Obi-Wan Kenobi? He's got the high ground. That's a good pick. All right, FHS, I'm here with the former anchor Keaton. And Keaton, who is your favorite Star Wars character? That's some very good ones. Uh, I mean, if we're going like coolness, I'm going Darth Vader. But if we're going like, uh, like meme worthy, I'm going Obi Wan or Yoda for sure. Um, but if we're going, uh, if we're going favorite like trooper, I'm probably going Rex or Cody. One of those. They're pretty good. Um, wait, are you talking like all Star Wars or like the movies? Uh, thank you for your answer, Keaton. All right, FHS, I'm here with my friend Keeler. And Keeler, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Jar Jar Binks. And what do you like about Jar Jar Binks, Keeler? His big floppy ears. Thank you very much. All right, I'm here with my friend Gonzi. And Gonzi, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Anakin Skywalker. He's the chosen one, obviously. That's a good pick. Thank you very much. All right, I'm here with my friend Frank. And Frank, who is your favorite Star Wars character? I would have to say Commander Cody or Captain Rex. And why do you like those characters specifically? Because I just like the clones the best, you know, Clone Wars, greatest show of all time. Thank you very much, Frank. All right, guys, I'm here with my friends Michael and Mia. And Michael, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Saj Ventress. And Mia, what about you? Mando. Thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, I'm here with my friend Nick. And Nick, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, the OG, the best. Thank you very much, Nick. All right, guys, I'm here with my friends Ritter and Nolan. And Ritter and Nolan, who are your favorite Star Wars characters? Uh, probably General Grievous. Um, I would say Darth Maul. Good picks, guys. Thank you very much. All right, guys, I'm joined here with my friend Shrum. And Shrum, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Uh, Jar Jar Binks, because he looks cool. All right, and we also got Brody. And Brody, who is your favorite Star Wars character? LeBron James. Nice. All right, guys, I'm joined here by my friend Brady. And Brady, who is your favorite Star Wars character? You know, you got to go with Cad Bane. Cad Bane is pretty cold. Thank you, Brady. All right, guys, I'm joined here by my friend Maddie. And Maddie, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Han Solo, for sure. And what do you like about Han Solo, Maddie? He's just the coolest, you know? He is pretty smooth. Thank you, Maddie. All right, guys, I'm joined here by the FHS sound guy, my friend Devin. And Devin, who is your favorite Star Wars character? Definitely R2-D2. All right, that's a good pick. Thank you, Devin. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for the Q&A today. I think I'm going to throw it back to the studio. Thanks, guys. Yeah, really good answers. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite Star Wars character? Did you have one? Uh, all of them. There are too many good ones to choose, right? Right. Yeah. Now we're going to throw it over to Will for the weather. Hey, guys. I'm back with weather. Weather with Will. But before we get into weather, you guys know the drill by now. we got to get the quote of the, of the week out of the way. And this week's quote of the week is, don't let a couple of tough chapters ruin the rest of your story. Uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I think that sometimes we have a tendency to let the current affect the way we look at the future. And sometimes we have a lot going on, and that can kind of tamper with and affect how we want to look towards things. But I believe that each and every one of us has the capability and the resilience to move through these problems and solve them. You're never alone in your endeavors. You have family, you have friends, you have pets, you have farmer who's down in the studio sometimes, but he's not here today, and I'm kind of sad about it. Uh, and yeah, with that said, we're going to move on to the weather forecast for the week. Uh, today, we're looking at, oh, I'm stepping in the wrong direction again. I always do it, guys. We're looking at a high of 61 and a low of 38 with mostly cloud coverage today. Tomorrow, for the track meet at, I believe, it's Rosemount, uh, we're looking at a high of 60 and a low of 34, some more cloud coverage. So it should be pretty optimal. Nobody should be overheating, I guess. And then as we move into the weekend, on Friday, we're looking at a high of 62. I'm going to move back a little bit more. I'm off frame now. High of 62, low of 46. On Saturday, it's prom day, guys. We're looking at a high of 65 with sun and a low of 45. And then for Mother's Day, things kind of fall off the rails again. We're looking at a high of 65 and a low of 50 with some rain. With that said, guys, that's going to be your weather for the week. I'm going to throw over, over to Haley Meredith. Thanks, Will. Yeah, I'm some good weather. I'm really hoping that Saturday for prom is going to be nice mm -hmm. weather. Especially for photos. Yeah. All right, well, it's time to find out exactly who's in the elevator this week. All right, to recap the clues, this teacher has four guitars and seven harmonicas, which is not enough. One saved three kids at once while lifeguarding in three feet of water. Was a former football and wrestling coach. Secretly wants to own a ranch outside in Livingston, Montana. And I don't remember the last one. Oh, it's, it's Mr. Mr. Lund. Lund. That's a good one. I never want to guess that one. But I guess he does have yeah. his daughter and stuff this here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, hold on. It's, 
It's moving. <laughs> we don't know what's well, happening. Now we are going to throw it back over to Will and um, no, wrong. Oh, just kidding. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Today was dressed like a teacher. Tomorrow is Thank You Teacher. And Friday is Write a Teacher a Thank You Note. So be on the lookout for paper in the cafeteria during lunch on Friday. And no matter the week or not, always remember to say thank you to your teachers. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Tauchi. Thank you. Now, for the last segment of our show, we are going over to the desk one last time to play some Star Wars trivia. And you guys can feel free to play along with us. Hey guys, I'm back at the desk and we're going to do one final Star Wars related segment. In the studio, I am joined by my t own very own TC teacher, Mr. Hall, and one of the students from his fifth hour. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of Star Wars trivia. Do you guys feel like you're pretty prepared for this? Sort of. Sort of? All right. What about you, Mr. Hall? I'm still kind of hurt about your top ten. Uh, I'll, I'll try. Oh, ooh, here, one sec. Let's throw the camera over to me. We're going to let Mr. Hall get his mic on real quick. Oh, he's got it? We're good? Okay, awesome. All right, with that said, we're going to jump into the questions. All right, so our very first question is, in the Star Wars galaxy, there's an invisible force that binds the galaxy together. What is it called? The force. Yeah, there we go. Uh, who is Luke and Leia's mother? Padme. Yep. Uh, how old is Yoda when he dies? I think 900. Yep. And who killed Han Solo? His son. His son. Yep, Tyler. there we go. All right, that was pretty, uh, that was thrown together pretty last minute. I'm sorry about that, guys, but thank you so much for playing you two. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. May the fourth be with you. Haley and Meredith, let's see what you got. How many did Thanks, you write, Haley? Uh, all, none of them. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. How many got, did you guys get right? Did you guys do well? Now, Student know. Council is holding an end of school year event titled Surf and Turf on May 20th, so mark your calendars. It will be held here at FHS from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and we will have food, yard games, and a movie. The movie hasn't quite been decided yet, so make sure you get to vote. Follow the Student Council on Instagram at Farmtown Studs and vote for the movie. The poll will be released on May 11th. If you'd be interested in helping to plan these kinds of events, consider joining Student Council. Applications come out tomorrow, May 5th, and close May 20th. The link will be posted on Schoology as well as on posters in the hall. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to Miss Fearing. And that's all for our show today. Have a great afternoon, and may the 4th be with you. We leave you today with highlights from the last Saturday's Choir Cabaret. Have a great day, Farmington. Heartbreak, heartbreak,